All right, so we're going to get started here. I want to just thank everyone for uh, coming in for this. Um, this is our 14th annual Los Angeles Melanoma Education Symposium. And I'd like to always uh, start by thanking everyone for showing up and remembering a time 14 years ago when we did this and no one Zoomed in. And that was not a thing. I mean, they zoomed in on flights. They came from Nevada and Idaho and Iowa and Washington um, to hear us talk about something. Uh, and well, let me see where that went. But this year, we have uh, over 150 people who are zooming in from Nigeria and Canada and Australia. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. And and so it's very wonderful. It just gives us some thought because now we have so much to talk about because we have so much to utilize. And um, that's only in the United States where we have such access and, and uh, access is coming around the world. So. Hopefully we'll we'll get this going. I wanted to just begin by thanking you for showing up, uh, recognizing uh, Samantha Guild and AIM at Melanoma for the collaboration and the guidance uh, that has made this type of meeting a success around the world. A few people, I mean, we like to think locally uh, of LA or the States, but this is something that happens globally and at many, many academic centers with a greater power and reach to patients. That type of one-to-one uh, -one with patients and advocates and everything is one of the greatest reasons why we've made the successes that we've had in melanoma. And let's not forget for those of you who see friends with other uh, malignancies, that the work that's being done in melanoma is the work that's guiding breakthroughs in other solid tumors. Uh, when we were presenting some of the early data with checkpoint inhibitors, it seemed like it was something that would only stay in melanoma, but now I don't even know the number of cancers, uh, gastric, esophageal, renal, breast uh, that are affected by immunotherapy. And today you'll hear from uh, the best. I will say that it will pick up, it will start with me and the quality and the expertise will increase, which is great because we're gonna uh, begin by talking about where we are for in initial therapies and then go into some of the rare um, types of melanoma. Then we'll talk about a place where we really didn't have therapies, adjuvant and neoadjuvant and the <clears throat> hopes of bringing all of that benefit to other solid tumors. You'll hear about how one of the trials that was uh, major in melanoma is going to be upfront as one, uh, one of a handful of the best presentations at the biggest meeting. Uh, you'll, we'll take a step back in quality and Dr. Sullivan will, <laughs> we'll hear from Dr. Sullivan about new options and obviously the um, approval of tail therapy and melanoma only is scratching at the surface for what we can do for other tumors like cervical cancer, lung cancer, head and neck cancer. And as that quality hits an acme, you'll uh, be introduced to one of our newest uh, fighters on our team, Dr. Anthony Nguyen, who's joined us um, in the radiation oncology department and is really this whole ideal that's come not only has changed how our colleagues in medical oncology <clears throat> think about treating patients with all solid tumors, it's also changed how our colleagues in surgical oncology speak to each other. And Dr. Ferries is a leader in that field. And Dr. Nguyen and Dr. Shao, some of you listen to Dr. Shao speak, are again leaders in how to uh, 
keep the peace between the medical oncologist, the surgical oncologist, and the radiation oncologist. And then we'll, uh, we'll end with questions. And that in sandwich in the middle there is uh, where we, I, I feel that we overlooked, but now need a, a greater voice. And that's where AIM and Sam Guild and everyone is coming in. Survivorship, how do I deal with doing well? Yeah, okay. And we'll move from there.